Hey there, my name is Felix Beck, and you are the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. This is a uh, review of the latest issue of Doctor Who magazine. It was uh, issue 562. This is probably the 562nd issue I bought then. That would be the game. Issue 562. Uh, uh, listen, I'm going to give you my little you know, bottle review right now. Uh, uh, Doctor Who magazine went through, has been through a bit of a bad patch uh, uh, and you know, alienated, I would say, half its audience, right? With much like Doctor Who. It's, oh, it's, it's been for a bit of a bad patch. I think uh, that's no longer viable for them anymore, and they decided to stop doing that about, you know, uh, about a year ago, about a year ago. But I think where they are right now is... Uh, the, yeah. I just think they're lacking real Doctor Who, like real old-school Doctor Who fans working uh, in the editorial, because it's just... Uh, it's not really. It's just a bit dull. Even though it's not offensive, it's not like saying we hate you. Uh, uh, it's just a bit dull and like like not very interesting. Yeah, that's basically where it is. I, I yeah, I am with it. Anyway, so but this is a better issue than most. Last issue was a better issue than most. Uh, look, I've been buying it decades, absolute decades. I would like to see it continue. I doubt it's going to survive the year, but I would very much like to see it continue. Uh, uh, so look, if this, if this, if, you know, honestly, if it's like you're like, go and buy, go and buy an issue. So we're going to do a yeah, review, but it's basically going to be a virtue thumb through. Imagine that you're at uh, uh, any uh, any news agent say, that used to stock uh, Doctor Who magazine that won't anymore because nobody buys it, uh, uh, and you're doing and you're having your thumbing through it. We're going to be doing that. We're going to. Before we get there, though, before we get there, can I ask you guys? Can you hit the like button? That would be fan dabby dabby dozy. If that hit the like button, hit the share button, comment. Commenting is really good. Thank you very much. I've been suggesting comments, uh, basically along the lines of, oh, Rabbi, you're so gorgeous. <laughs> How about we'll go for today? If you can't think of what the comment said, oh, Rabbi, you are so you're so wise. We'll go for that instead. You know, I want you can you can appreciate me for my my uh, uh, for my mind as well as my beautiful body. By the way, you you want to know what it's like getting old? This is me. This is me after I've dieted and worked out. <laughs> After that, so you know, yeah, you got that to look for. Fine, so like, share, subscribe. Oh, hit the subscribe. If I haven't asked you to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. It's insanely helpful uh, uh, for us independent new voices here, here on YouTube. So yeah, I am uh, uh, very, very appreciative. Uh, and listen, if I if I titillate your fancy in any way, shape, or form, I'm, I'm monetizing the channel right now with uh, with this Indiegogo. The over these two stonking great graphic novels. Uh, uh, I think there's a. Uh, but, uh, we got a sale still going on. How many we've got left of that? We've got uh, 23 left. 23 out of 40 left on the sale price. Then it goes up five bucks if you want it. Uh, um... Now, you know, get, get it quick while we beat me for the price go up. And also, last night, a bit bit of channel news. I did, uh, I uh, I had an idea. So if you check out uh, check out this this pinup of uh, uh, Tom Baker. It's uh, it's going to be uh, uh, an A3 poster that's being being uh, bundled in with with the mid to upper levels of the. Uh, uh, of the campaign, but I, this was done by mistake. This 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 drawing was done by mistake. It was supposed to be a sketch. He made it into a full do drawing. Dominic Ratchet, freaking awesome uh, artist. So I said last night I was doing a live stream. Uh, if I get one more backer, one more backer during the stream, I am going to commission a a sister piece of this with uh, of a Peter Capaldi. Uh, Doc, so they'll, they'll go, they'll go with this, and and you know people like that. People went for it quite, quite well. So uh, so that the, that's coming, and everybody who backed last night will uh, will be getting that that uh, that poster as well. Again, it's going to be uh, a, you know an E three poster. It, I think if we hit something like twelve grand, which is it, it's pretty feasible. You know, if you back it, it's really feasible. <laughs> if we hit twelve grand, everyone's going to get it. Everyone's going to get everything. Uh, also, you know, let's just quick quickly go through so you get. Two graphic novels, you get uh, uh, this poster over here, the Peter Cabaldi poster, and you get a series of art cards I call For the Male Gaze. For the Male Gaze. Uh, uh, these are based on uh, uh, my, my genre-related uh, uh, masturbatory fantasies. Uh, uh, from when I was twelve years old, so you know that they're, they're all kind of dated in the uh, uh, they're, they're all kind of dated in the eighties somewhere. We have uh, Deanna Troy. I'm sensing very strong emotions, Captain. We have uh, uh, Space nineteen ninety nine party like it's nineteen ninety nine. We have uh, a bit of uh, uh, James Bondy one here, uh, keeping the British end up. I, I do like that one. Uh, uh, we've got a bit of Judge Anderson going on uh, over here, 
And finally, finally, this one, my favorite, no hanky panky in the TARDIS. No hanky panky in the TARDIS. Yeah, I would love to interview Nicola Bryant. I would absolutely adore to interview Nicola Bryant because I, uh, I've said this many times on my channel. When I was like 12 years old, she was squeezed into spandex, a very healthy young lady, squeezed into spandex and pushed on TV in front of me. And just at the same, I mean, I may actually be real. It's like, uh, it was the exact moment, like, like my... Uh, my definition of uh, of uh, uh, eroticism was developing right there. So she just kind of got imprinted on me, you know. Uh, uh, and I'm sure, and it's a very common experience. People of my age, it was a very common experience. I would love to talk to her about that. Like, yeah, what is it like to be like so deeply sexualized in for such a massive uh, uh, amount of people? It's not like dozens, but not like thousands or tens of thousands. I, I would love to to to, to talk about. Uh, you know, the whole sexual political thing, but I, I have no idea how to do it. I have no idea how to do that. Anyway, for the male gaze, uh, uh, when we hit 10 grand, that's key, we're getting another five cards. Uh, uh, Wilmer, but, uh, uh, we decided last night, Buck Rogers' is, uh, uh, Wilmer Deering will be making an appearance. <laughs> that was the name. Erin uh, uh, Gray. Fine, fine. So anyway, so that's that. Uh, let's look at Doctor Who magazine, shall we? Yeah, it's uh, over here. Yeah, that's our drink. There you go. Firstly, Excellent, excellent, excellent cover. And they again, they've learnt how to do good covers. Um, yeah, as I said, Doctor Who magazine has gone, has gone through a, a patch where they, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was before the t it was before the TV went through the patch of saying that we really don't like you if you don't uh, if you don't have our same uh, uh, political outlook on every freaking thing. If you think that uh, having border security. Uh, of any type whatsoever is a is a is a good thing. Then then we hate you because you're a racist. So that that was the kind of vibe going on. Yeah, and there's a million things like that. A million things like it used to be. Yeah, it used to be we didn't moralize our political differences. We didn't say if you if you disagree with me about how to use their nation's resources, you are you do so because you're a bad and evil person. We just said we had different outlooks, right? Uh, so that changed over the last five years. And I and I think Doctor Who magazine uh, went headlong. Uh, 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 into that change, the quality did drop, uh, and it did alienate a lot. Uh, was it a lot of uh, readers? I have people on my channel comment all the time saying, "I will never buy Doctor Who magazine again." After uh, some of their staff uh, uh, were incredibly rude to me on Twitter, right? Yeah, you know, or, or whatever. Which get a lot. Really, I don't know what they're doing that for. Uh, but anyway, so they they've realised that we they need us. We are their bread and butter. You know, they had this idea that uh, uh, Jodie Whittaker was going to take over as Doctor Who, and it was going to be incredibly popular and successful. And you know, it could have been if they if they made. In my opinion, I don't think they they've been very good episodes, uh, very engaging episodes. They could have been, but uh, they decided to be very very preachy again. All opinion statements, but it's opinion kind of widely shared. So, uh, um, so anyway, we got to, uh, uh, so they, yeah, this cover, this cover is a very old school cover. It's a riff on, what was it, the 1960, 66, 65, 67 Dalek book? Freaking awesome. I, I, I adore that. I adore that with the, like a modern Dalek there. This is, looks like a modern render. Excellent. I'm just saying, absolutely excellent. Love this, love this, uh, 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 love this cover. And in, in general, this issue is really good for me because I'm, I'm a graphic designer and I'm, you know, and I'm a, an artist. So all this does uh, interest me. Oh, look at that. This is the sexiest photo of Sarah Sutton that she's ever taken. And, you know, <laughs> like, no, I wouldn't say that, you know, that she's a, a, you know unattractive person, but she's not like, again, not, a, not like Nick LeBron. And it was made into a sex symbol. But uh, that is the, the sexiest photo I've ever seen of her. I don't think, I don't think that, that that's the most eroticized she ever became. Uh, uh, it was... Yeah, even when she uh, uh, took her clothes off in uh, Terminus for a reason that I still don't really understand, right? I don't, I'm like, I don't understand why the character was doing it. I don't understand what the writer was doing. It. I don't understand why the producer was doing it. I don't understand. I'm confused by it. Fine. So uh, we got the uh, um, uh, the editorial notes. And, yeah, having a Morbius doctor there really annoys me. Really annoys me because I did uh, this thing yesterday where I, where I looked over the... Um, uh, where, where I transcribed uh, uh, the Radio Times' uh, uh, podcast where they kept talking about Timeless Child one year later. Timeless Child, I think, has been reasonably divisive, right? Reason I, I, again, not a fan. Although for me, it didn't, it, it wasn't, didn't upset me as much as a lot of people because I, I, I by the time they hit Orphan 55, I went, this is so awful. I can't even think of this. Right? I can't even think. And, like, and I, I, you know, I, if you like it, great. Well, I, uh, I re-edited my... Um, 
uh, my, my, my copy of Twice Upon a Time. So when, when he regenerates, he regen when Kamadi regenerates, he regenerates into uh, uh, Trout, uh, not into Trout, in, into, into Hartnell, giving it some kind of circularity. That's the second time regenerate, uh, I re-edited it. The first time, as he regenerates, it fades to white, and, uh, and you see the TARDIS spinning in space. Because uh, I just figured at some point, at some point, there'll be uh, uh, there'll be good Doctor Who. Uh, Doctor Who, that seems like Doctor Who to me, will be back. Uh, uh, I'm just, I, I'm not holding my breath right, right, right now. That's why I put the, um, uh, have him regenerating into, in, uh, you know, into hard. It's really good, by the way. I, I really, it's a really good solution. Um, so anyway, so all through that, they kept saying, well, you know, season 12 did legitimize the Morbius doctors. Uh, no, the time of children did legitimize the Morbius canonized. No, 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 no. It's just such, yeah, which is, this is the picture. Of it. It's. Doug Catford, in, in, you know, in a, in a jacket and a scarf, right? Uh, it's, it's so, uh, uh, no, you, you, you uh, these Morbius doctors, you find bending tournament between Doctor Who and uh, Morbius and other Time Lord, and you had these unexpected, un these unrecognized uh, regenerations show up. Um, and so when in, 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 timeless, in Timeless Children, the Doctor uses a stunning and brave mental powers to break the Matrix. <laughs> I don't know how. One of the things uh, that break the matrix, and one of the images he sees is one of the images from Brain of Morbius, right? Uh, 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 so no, that doesn't canonize, and that's well, that was just what was canon at the time. We're not seeing new images of this guy, right? Right. So anyway, but they are convinced. Oh no, the, no, no. It's just idiocy, pure idiocy. Uh, uh, best explanation I've ever, ever, ever heard for those Morbius doctors, by the way, were they were uh, fake incarnations. Um, uh, created by the fourth doctors by Tom Baker to to win the mind bending tournament. Freaking genius! Okay, that is a genius explanation, which it really works on many, many, many levels. So yeah, putting this picture here is just kind of annoying, Marcus. Just kind of annoying, and, and I don't know. I just don't know how much of a real Doctor Who fan you are, because like maybe I realize that, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he's basically saying they're on. They're 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 doing terribly. The Doctor Who magazine they're doing. Absolutely terribly since January. Like after January, they hoped things would start to per perk up. No, January is what they were hoping to get to, and it didn't help them. It hasn't helped them at all. Uh, they're dropping the comic strip, uh, which is the most expensive part of the comic, and it is unprofessional garbage, right? I, and I look, the writing's fine. Scott Gray's a fine writer. Uh, <laughs> his, his artwork is just not professional. We'll see. Look, we'll get to it. We'll see it. So, uh, I, I just don't see it. It seems like it's not going to survive for uh, survive for the uh, and maybe no, not have uh, uh, um, deeply controversial people as your as your content providers as well who have come out and said, oh, we 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 absolutely hate you uh, uh, if you have any difference or whatever. So we got some uh, Gallifrey and Guardian accent uh, action. The two new uh, early adventures about. Uh, with uh, Dodo, and th these are basically sequels or whatever to uh, prequels to uh, stories. They're basically trying to find ways of getting you to buy them, and it's actually done have the opposite to me. I'm not interested in these at all. Uh, Melody de Malone, Malone Mystery, no, I'm not really that interested either. This looks interesting. Their new bookazine, uh, and uh, I think I'll talk about more about the Disney ratings. This looks interesting as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna check this out. Maybe I'll do a review on this. Sophie Aldred has a website, right? The official magazine, uh, uh, Aldred magazine. Um, it, let's read it. The new website uh, features an online shop. I've always wanted the shop. Well, I think I probably want it. Right, yeah. They, uh, Sophie tells Dr. Uh, DWM, I, when I was a kid, I had imagined a nice second-hand bookshop with, uh, with a cafe. Well, we all had to imagine that. Lovely. Uh, but this is a good start. I'll be also be blogging from time to time, keep up with the latest news. Oh, uh, no, good luck to you, Sophie. I, 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 I like that magazine thing. Uh, and they're re-releasing Script Doctor uh, with a new updated version. Good book, by the way. I have to say, it was a, you know, it was a pretty darn... Uh, pretty darn... Yeah. Uh, Ga uh, Galactic Forum. Yeah, no. <laughs> Cute, the whole... Uh, who, knows? Who, knows? who knows what they're talking about? I haven't, you know, I haven't read, read this for a while. Uh, yeah, again, listen, I, I, you know, I just want to point out there are fans of the current era, uh, you know, and uh, uh, I, it's not for me. It's not for me, but I'm really glad that there are people enjoying it, right? Because I've really enjoyed Doctor Who's life. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, even though this is not for me, I'm really glad there are other people still, still uh, to the point where, 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 they, where they get inspired to do things. Well, no Clark. Well, no Clark, by the way, I think should be the star and showrunner of Doctor Who. 
quite frankly. I mean, listen, BBC is obsessed, obsessed beyond obsessed with uh, identity. Uh, and he's a real talent. No, Clark, I mean, if you've ever seen his movies, he's a good writer, he's a good director. He'll be a good doctor. So I would like to see him as the uh, creative director and the star of Doctor Who. I think it'd be great. No, Clark and Keely Holtz talked to Graham Norton about their time on Doctor Who and the souvenirs. Like, oh, okay, I am so seeing that. Okay, that's it. They got off on the lockdown now. Uh, YouTuber John Snare's documentary explores the ways in which missing episodes of Doctor Who come. Oh, I would check that out. Okay, listen, you're gaining, you're gaining my interest, right? Uh... Playing Doctor Who theme tune and oh yes, I like listen. Season twenty four, uh, I think it's one of my least. Season twenty three and season twenty four are my least favorite seasons after uh, uh, obviously the <laughs> twelve of the current era. Um, but this trailer is so freaking good. Uh, where there's Sylvester McCoy back in the Doctor outfit and uh, Bonnie Langford is so good. I, I, it's it nearly convinced me to buy this box. But it's nearly convinced me to do it because it, it it was just so. Good. Uh, a bit of Thasmin stuff going on here. Thasmin's coming, baby. Thasmin has to be coming. Not bad, Har Harry Sullivan. Shop. Regression of the Daleks. Oh, right, right, right. That will be the Russell D. Davis one uh, from It's a Sin. <laughs> yeah, the show that that, that didn't didn't really uh, didn't really down here. Nigel Adams, uh, Mum Janet Grees uh, at Target Books Cover Exhibition 26. Oh, I wish I lived in England to that. I would look all the original art from the Target Book Cover. Which is that leads is quite a nice segue that leads us into uh, um, uh, the issue. Uh, oh, the owners are talking about the film. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Wolf Bandit Girl is currently working on a production uh, for Apple TV, uh, fitting in a schedule around the new series. Suspicion is based on the Israeli drama False Flag. Wow, I tell you, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff is Israeli dramas uh, remade. Uh, uh, in treatment was a big one. Uh, uh, homeland, homeland. The everybody say I like my Hebrew. I live in Israel. My Hebrew is terrible. I don't swear. Everybody says the, the that homeland, the original series of homeland were were great, but the original original version in Hebrew, everything is that was the best thing they've ever seen. It was so much cheaper. Um, so, uh, I quite like this thing, but it's little this little bit of nostalgia again because it, it, it's it's they realize that old farts like me. Is a significant demographic, right? So uh, I, they are a few old uh, to, to add into the mix. So yeah, so now we're into the main thrust of this issue is all about uh, uh, Doctor Who cover art, right? Which is for me again fascinating. I'm really into this stuff. I'm not sure how much general interest is, but yeah, they had like they've had stuff about like you know the audio in stories before, and, and it's just like kind of the whole issue has left me cold because of it because. But like, yeah, I can't remember how to pronounce the name, uh, Chris. Uh, how was it, Achielos? Uh, if you go to the Facebook uh, channel, uh, I think it's on Facebook. Dan Hadley has a uh, in-depth interview with him, right? And it's it's really really good. So yeah, so this is like a nice, interesting. Uh, uh, it's a reasonably interesting article, right? Uh, so then we got um, uh, was it uh, Colin Howard? He he did a ton of the. Um, uh, what's it called again? Of the uh, uh, DVD? No, that's not DVD. The the, the video covers. I tell you, Attack of the Cybermen holds holds a special place in my heart. It has a uh, 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 Perry in a wonderful uh, uh, pink spandex outfit. It has uh, uh, Sarah Green, my other uh, uh, lustful fantasy on that day. <laughs> uh, even though in a crime mask, it did, did the trick. And then Faith Brown, who I did not know, I was. A until I saw that, I was like, hmm, I quite like Faith Brown. So yeah, Colin Howard, I, again, all this stuff is it's interesting. I like this fa Face of Raven thing. I do like it when it is, when I see artists from the 80s or from the other eras uh, uh, do, do something modern. So, I remember that. I remember buying this, tw uh, Two Doctors. It was a big, thick uh, two VHS set, right? <laughs> I remember that. Um, so then we got uh, Martin, uh, was it? Yeah, is that how you ever saying? He was a long time Doctor uh, Comics uh, artist. Uh, yeah, I he signed these sign the last uh, of the um, um, uh, McGann run, I think. Yeah, the last of the, uh, of the McGann run, uh, which still uh, it do doesn't contradict uh, uh, what's the name the uh, um, uh, uh, what's it? Night of the Doctor because they they weren't allowed to have his uh, uh, was it excellent face. Uh, uh, in it at all, so they were the last scene panel was going to be generated uh, as as Eccleston, but instead they just walk off into the sunset. 
Uh, if you get the collection, it's in there. That 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 discarded page is in there. I, I really like seeing it. Uh, so yeah, look, this stuff I am interested in. Right, right. And so he does a lot of the design work now for the uh, uh, the reconstructions. Uh, and he on. Uh, he, I don't think he worked on Fury from the Deep, which really not. Uh, so now we got who is this? Nick Sketchell uh, talks to Stuart Crouch about. The power of digital technology and his collaboration with Anti Dry about breathing new life into a style. So uh, okay, so again, graphic designer. I for me, this is like fascinating, right? I do like this piece. Dogs, right? I look. I just like that. It's very, very. Cool. Um, but yeah, okay, fine. So uh, I, I'm not really that thrilled with these uh, 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 these things trying to be like Chris Elza uh, 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 Akalas, but. Uh, it, like it, it just doesn't really I, you can't really alter but the pack yeah look packaging is interesting there's supposed to be this really cool packaging for uh the shard release at some point uh but they they uh uh but they did but they ended, it ended up not not going with them i think that clayton hickman did so now also we're going to talk to the uh Anthony lamb who does a lot of work for big finish he's not their best cover artist but he's pretty good he's nearly good but he get there's uh Oh, the guy that Time Lord Victorious uh, uh, poster, which got us all excited. That That's the guy. That's the guy. But yeah, this is pretty good. Anthony Lamb. Uh, whoa, what's this? Build your own enterprise? Ah, I'm up for that. Okay. I wonder how big it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, no, many people have said that to me. I wonder how big it is. <laughs> so now we've got this coming out uh, this month, uh, 42 to Dawn Doomsday. It was John Lloyd, comedy writer John Lloyd, had written a script for Doctor Who for uh, Tom Baker and uh lala ward they ne it, you know, it never got made it's being it's being released this month by big finish uh, adaptation of it so this is kind of like uh what was it prelude of it so yeah i'm into this because it was uh, uh john lloyd being edited by douglas adams I, I i i'm intrigued to see what you know what they were uh uh were gonna if we're gonna do uh doctor who and the kitterman <laughs> yeah that, that was the the other one that never came out so it's uh yeah again it seems like a bit of a lengthy uh article but yeah okay fine i i you color me intrigued game has zero interest has absolutely zero interest um so then you've got this new thing called collectivity this is talking about collecting uh signatures uh, again leaves me cold because i just like i've never been into but if you uh although i do have one of these with these peter hanning books which is signed by freaking everybody uh i should take that out it's good and i had like nicholas courtney sign and say i owe it, i owe it all to you nicholas courtney and you're the best <laughs> it was back when i was when i was a young whippersnapper so yeah okay people people click uh uh yeah i wonder what what the prestige on on the on jody signature uh, are they higher in price because she's the current incumbent on the role or is she uh, or, or is it lower price because she's not very popular i don't know so this is about the uh the game yeah okay uh vaguely I, I would read it i would read it it's just not again have you seen so far no, nothing here is like universal like oh that's interesting i really want to know more right i i would like and they used to do that in doctor magazine when uh uh what's it over i'm thinking trying to remember um during the uh 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 the 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 last hiatus because i think another one's coming uh we had some really interesting discussion like what is it to be fan what makes a fan in fan right yeah you know, we, we could have there's a lot of division in fandom about stuff there's a lot of fans who don't know anything about the classic series wouldn't it be great to do a time team with people who haven't seen the classic series and uh you know like lead them through it like i would love to see russell z davis uh talk through city of death with new fans would that be great uh, uh, but then again, I'm a massive Doctor Who fan, and I can think of things. There's like other fans who did incredible book about the Blackpool exhibition. They should put something about that. And it, this book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, but sadly, you know, the, the the fans that took over the asylum in the in the in the eighties are uh, they're just not as passionate about. It. So this is a real irritating waste and filler in my mind. They've uh, uh, they've taken the uh, the step the, the floor plans. For the 1967 story Moon on Blu-ray, yeah, Blu not Blu-ray on, on DVD. Is it Blu-ray as well? I don't know. This is what one that, no DVD. This is the one of the ones that they've re reconstructed. It's uh, you got you have a solid two episodes out of four anyway. But we know what this all looks like. So they take the floor plans and they've they made CGI versions of it for a reason. I just don't understand. Like, I, I, okay, um, who cares? Honestly, who, I don't understand. Like, this is a 
or this is not a story that we've never seen any of this stuff from. I, I, so I, 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 like, this just seems like a pointless, pointless filler. It goes on and on and on for quite some time. Uh, this looks quite interesting, actually. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting like it's nine ninety nine. That's it. Uh, so it's a new thing going all over the year, nineteen sixty five. I mean. Oh, that mechanoid toy does make me want to buy this magazine. Okay, <laughs> you know, well, I was a bit dismissive. And now I see the mechanoid, I'm like, but if, I, I just don't have the confidence they're going to be doing, you know, they're going to go through, you know, all of them. So this is a, a really real jip. This is what they sold the magazine. Right? It was an interview with uh, Chris North, Mr. Big, who I say I didn't, uh, I didn't think Revolution of Daleks was bad. Uh, oh, no, I did think it was bad because the role is so awful. Uh, uh, but when she wasn't in it, 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 there was a lot of things that weren't terrible. Uh, Chris North being one of them. I think he was a he's, a he's a charismatic character. And I did end up kind of rooting for him and liking him a lot. So, yeah, that shows you. Uh, yeah, he's a villain. That shows you uh, uh, how I think off base the current, the current production is. Uh, so they were going to have an interview with him. They, they said, you know, they previewed it saying this is the big thing of the issue. Out is one page. A picture doesn't count. Two pages. That's it. Two. And it's half. It's one and a half pages. Really? It's just, it, like, it was very, very slow. So now we're on to the, uh, uh, the this is the, this is how the Doctor Who magazine goes out, right? Like, exactly, exactly. Where the quality is just fallen off, you know, fallen off. Uh, uh, this is just not professional. Sorry. Uh, uh, you know, Scott, I, I, I don't, I, it's, it's, I don't mean to dish you. I, I, really, I don't mean to uh, be dismissive of you, but this work is simply... Um, I, 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 uh, uh, if I, if I, if, listen, if I was producing this comic, I would reject these pages. And listen, Doctor Who magazine, uh, uh, I can get you really decent, uh, uh, comic strips for 250, like color, lettered, script, everything. $250, but I don't know what you're paying. But this, this is shocking, right? This is absolutely shocking. Uh, uh, it's, it's garbage. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's such a, Bad way for for uh, the Doctor Who magazine uh, the to conclude, which is what I what I think is really happening. But and if by the way, if they they can't afford them, uh, why don't they just you know the backup strip? Uh, we haven't seen some of those. We haven't seen for years and years and years. I, I, you could color them even if you want to go crazy, but just re backup strips. There, I mean, look, I mean, look at that. Really, just none of this. None. None of this looks professional at all. So, uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Facts of Fiction, Dinosaurs on Spaceship, not a popular episode. Not a particularly popular episode, but I, it's, I guess it's a way you can put Chris Chibnall with it without uh, uh, invoking the ire of, it, of, of you know, most of the readership. Uh, although, again, this is, again, people really didn't like, the, uh, like this episode. I never minded it. I thought it was a fun idea. Uh, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm carried along by Matt Smith's proposal. I like Rory's uh, dad in there. I liked uh, this guy, the uh, the great uh, the great white hunk. I think if you can you say that it was basically that's what he was. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a Queen Nefertiti. I, I I liked all of that stuff. It was all a bit. Uh, you know, the villain was a bit naff. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was a basic fun romp. I I think it was saved by performance. And by uh, probably, uh, 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 that would be my guess. Apocrypha, this new thing they're going on about to show you that, you know, uh, like, yeah, there's lots of different stuff. Spaces to justify the, the multiverse thing, which they're going to bring in to uh, uh, justify the uh, uh, timeless children. Um, yeah, snores, who cares? Reviews, uh, this is the main reviewers of the Gallifrey Time War. I got out of Gallifrey Time War a while ago. I asked myself, why am I paying money to hear Lala Ward huff and sigh at me uh, at the same time of having bad political uh, uh, what was it, analogies thrust in my face by... I, I, I da Although, Richard Armitage is Raslon, I kind of wanted to hear that. I kind but, uh, but really, uh, you just alienated me. We had a big finish. I'm terribly sorry. Um, and also talked to him out of as well. Uh, who did this? Who, who, who? Savages, Peter Purvis? That sounds pretty interesting to do the book of uh, uh yeah no I'm not interested. <laughs> Edge of time game. I, how is it vinyl? I thought it was a game. I, I'm gonna read this just to find out 
what this is. This is the music from Major Time and whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm reasonably intrigued to know what the hell this is. Oh, so, so now we've got uh, reviews of the new Target book, Dalek. Dalek is the one I'm looking forward to uh, reading. Um, uh, there's a book on tape coming out with Nick Briggs. So that looks really good. Uh, uh, not all the other range is good. So the other one is the Crimson Terror. I didn't like the Crimson Terror when it was on TV, right? I gotta rewatch it because I'm bugging it. But it's just kind of stupid that this is read by, uh, well, the book, the book on tape they're coming out with is read by the woman who played uh, uh, Jenny. Uh, Jenny, and she reads it like in character, from what I can tell. Which finders? Oh my God, zero interest, zero, zero beyond zero. And, and I like, like really, like I'm glad they have the classic logo over there, and that must have been a big deal. Uh, but they have to have the new logo on it. And look, uh, this the, the book on tape, this is going to be re read by um, Eldred. Uh, crossword, never do. Um, I forgot there was a revolu uh, uh, revelation of Dalek's uh, uh, target book. I, again, wouldn't mind reading it. It's finding time. So looking forward to next month, we've got uh, the Lone Shift uh, coming out. And uh, no interest. <laughs> again, big fish, yeah. No interest at all, I'm afraid. Um... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just uh, and I see the the writing staff on it. Uh, you know, you know uh, a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Maybe diversity hiring. This looks good though. This looks really good. Firstly, awesome cover. I, okay, look at this cover. It's so good. I mean, it really like got the excellence in it. Got all different types of Daleks. It it gets really good. I love it. Um, oh, is this with uh, was it Anne Kelso in it? It's uh, it's. Uh, no, so she's playing a different guy. Jane Slavin plays a different character now. Uh, she's, she's Anya Kingdom. And then, yeah, the big one uh, next month, Dark Universe, which I have high hopes for. It's, it, lo it looks like it's going to be really good. Again, John Dorney and Andrew Smith writing, very, very solid. Very, very solid. Uh, this, uh, I, I, I can't imagine they're going to do anything to alienate anybody in this. One. This, is the, uh, this is Big Finish's lifeline. This, War Doctor Begins and the uh, uh, Eccleston uh, series. This is their new business model moving forward, uh, uh, which I really think they should do a streaming service, two ninety nine a month, thirty titles a month, um, and drop them weekly. You know, get seven seven titles a week if you want uh, from their back catalogue and don't do anything in the last few years. You will just generate interest and you control the conversation. The trouble is that there's just a wall of content that people can't get, can't get through. So that I think is way to go also you need to package everything as well, right you can't have individual uh it's just too much for anybody to my mind to get around and next month chris eckland's interview i'm not normally interested in uh, uh actor interviews i'm bloody interested in that i will read that although again it's very uh, it's gonna be a very like homogenized uh doctor who magazine so how good uh, how good can it be um uh, rough judges apocryphal rev revisits uh the monsters inside I kind of remember that. What was the one? I guess I'll find out next month. Uh, Who's army tracking down the old unit soldier? I, like, really? I mean, look. Yeah, it's just, it's not that interesting. Really like, well, the people who used to play the unit, they were, the soldiers that were shot in the back, it's not that interesting, right? It's not that interesting. Uh, in fact, a fiction's got uh, uh, a father time. And then, yeah, they give you, uh, by this was. These two stories weren't bad. The uh, uh, the next two uh, was the uh, primeval design and I can't uh, were not great. We're not great at all. But this one, Night the Comet, has uh, John Coltrane. It's really, really good. Uh, and then you get at the end, you get a like a, a. I wish they didn't have the logo on it, but you get a clean uh, uh, a clean version uh, of of the cover image. Excellent cover image. Uh, uh, so listen again, not obnoxious. Not obnoxious in any way, shape, or form. It's, uh, uh, but engaging, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I hope it survives. I hope it survives. I don't see it happening. I think this is the last year of Doctor Who magazine, uh, which is sad, which is sad for me. Uh, but I hope I'm wrong. Listen, genuinely, genuinely, I hope I'm wrong. There you go. My name is Zena Beck, and you are back for another. Please, uh, blah, please like, share, and subscribe. Do not forget my uh, uh, my Indiegogo. Uh, this, uh, the, we got, you, 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 uh, you get this. Uh, poster as well as long as we and I, we, I'm, when I finish recording this video I'm getting in contact with Dominic and commissioning the Capaldi one I am looking forward to seeing that my name is Cena Beckett you are by from another planet please like share and subscribe and ring the little bell ring that little bell so you are notified when new videos drop <laughs>